Let us say a few words about how values are actually stored in computer memory. What we want to do is we want to build a more robust mental model of what happens inside of the computer when we run a program. A very useful way to think about memory is to think of a number of boxes which are placed adjacent to one another with each box obtaining a specific address, a specific number that refers to it. Now each box in this case would represent one byte, now you have heard this term before, and then each byte in turn would represent eight bits. Now the bits are the zeros and ones which are so famous in computer science. So the idea is that by using such structure we can actually place values using bits in byte-sized chunks and then we can use the addresses of these bytes to always find a value in memory. So if we for example have some human readable called let num1 equals sign 40, let is a keyword, num1 in this case is an identifier for a variable, the equal sign is the assignment operator in JavaScript and then 40 is a value. So what we're doing in this case is we are defining a num1 variable and then we are placing the value 40 in it. But what would happen in, in machine readable code? Well, in order for us to actually do follow the instruction, the first thing that we have to do is we have to find an empty slot in memory. For example, address 5 is empty. We will then allocate 48 bits or 8 bytes, so 8 boxes, so that we store a number. Now in JavaScript it takes 8 boxes, 8 bytes, to store a number. This is just the convention that the language uses. So we allocate 8 boxes and then we store the number in memory. How do we store the number in memory? By putting 48 zeros in one in a specific order which means something to the computer so that we can retrieve this value if we go to address 5. So notice we have a we have defined a value we have associated it with an address so if we want to retrieve this value from memory all we need to do is we need to go to the correct address and then retrieve the value. So know that our num1 identifier that we used in our human readable code was in fact not needed anymore. So as far as the computer is concerned, it can completely do everything that it needs to do by only looking at the address and then the chunk of memory associated with it so that it can retrieve a value. So let us get a better intuition of how we manipulate values in memory. Let's go back to our previous human readable example where we defined a num1 variable and then we assigned the number 40 to it. Again, visually we can quite easily represent this by defining a shelf num1, then generating a temporary value and moving it to that location. So now we have a num1 variable with the number 40 at that location. Now what if we have a second line of code though where we take the same variable num1 but now we want to assign a new value to it 41. How can we represent this? So if you look at the little arrow which appeared on the screen we actually changed a single bit in this 64 bit series of numbers. So now at address 5 in computer memory we have a new value which corresponds to the numerical value 41. How can we represent this visually using our balls and shelves metaphors? Well this would be the same as generating a number 41 and then placing it at the same location over the previous value 40 at the num1 shelf. So notice the previous value at num1 has been removed. It has been replaced by the new value. There is no way of getting it back anymore. What would happen if we add a third line of code where we now define a new variable num2 and in it we would place the num1 value which is 41 added to the number 40. How can we represent this? Once again we would run this, this line of code. Well what we would do is we would go to a new address in memory at place 13 which is empty and then we would put in 
a series of zeros and ones there that correspond to the number 81 in this case. Let us see this visual again using our shelves and balls. What would happen now is we would define a new shelf, num2. We would then add up the value at the num1 shelf to the number 40. To do this, we would use an addition operator. So both of these values would go into it. The addition operator would add them up and it would give us the result, which is 81, which would be placed at the num2 variable. So notice what happened here. We didn't remove the value from the num1 variable. So we still have a ball with 41, with a value of 41 there, but now we have defined a new shelf, a new variable, a new address in memory, which has a new value, 81, which we can also keep using in the program. This is JavaScript 3D Code World. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would like to see more videos like this.